Two weeks ago, I gave every Florida school 15 years to see who could be the absolute best that that state had to offer, and I thought let's run this concept back, and there was a request to do it with states like California and Texas and other big states that have a lot of football teams, and Texas was going to definitely be one of the teams on the list that I am going to do, but that state has the most schools so that one i'm gonna have to save for when i have a little bit more time there's like 20 schools in there so i thought let's do california up next because florida had 10 schools california has 11 so it's a you know equal amount to keep track of just about we have every division one fbs and fcs school and you can see i made sure all the fcs schools that came in one star programs with like about as low of an overall as i could give them like low 70s overall so you know ignore the stuff at the start where it was saying like they're an 80 overall that was just the creators i didn't use the team builder roster so they're going to be pretty bad to start off and be starting off from basically you know as low level as i can give them but here's the first season results and we have stanford and ucla in the conference championship and stanford's going to take home the first one i will be showing you all the close games as usual if it's a 19 point game like this and it was very one-sided there's not really going to be a whole lot to show but as our first year representative, Stanford goes to the playoffs where they're going to get smacked around by Oregon. You know, a couple of blowout games to start, but we'll have some close ones and some good ones eventually. Just like the previous video, we'll be judging these teams at the very end and you could determine who you think won these 15 years. We'll be judging them on their overall win-loss record, how many players they send to the NFL, their average recruiting class, the amount of conference championship and bowl games that they win, and if they can go to the playoffs and win a national championship, you know, not to spoil anything that happened in the last video with the Florida team what we did see a team win a national championship in it you know put them into that top tier category so we're going to see if any of these teams can get into the national championship picture in year two ucla versus cal in the conference championship so we're going to see cal and ucla it's not a close one once again but cal is able to put a touchdown up to make it a two score game at the very end but it's not going to matter ucla lost the conference championship last year but this year they're able to get the job done so UCLA has kind of taken the early advantage here with two straight conference championship appearances and a conference championship victory. And finally, we got a close one here in our first playoff action. Now it's going to be UCLA and Washington. It's UCLA ball with two and a half minutes to play, and they are at enemy territory just inside. A little triple option. The quarterback keeps it running up ahead for a first down and in field goal range. They are just about there under two minutes to play. Now third down and two. The handoff is going to get stopped just shy of the marker. That's going to settle for the field goal try where Washington watches their team allow three points and now the offense is coming out into the field can UCLA be the first team to get a playoff victory here and Washington's gonna have a big time catch now third down and two in enemy territory throwing underneath that's gonna be caught and that's going to set them up after a couple of incompletions for a field goal try to send it to overtime and we got overtime action here in this playoff game. Washington, third down and three, is going to throw an interception, and UCLA takes it, and now just a field goal away from getting that victory in that first playoff win. Play action, throwing, and he's running around a little bit in the pocket, and he delivers a big-time throw to the one-yard line. First down and goal. It's going to be a handoff, and UCLA has won the first playoff game for these California teams, so they are off to the early advantage and the early start. If we'd be seeing a national championship early on, that'd be pretty crazy to see one that quickly. Unfortunately, no, we won't. Clemson takes care of business in the second round, but UCLA did their thing, and I think it's going to be looking pretty good to start things off. Clemson went on to win the whole thing, so not a bad loss to say you lost to the eventual champs, but we see some other bowl action here. As you know, I'm not going to go too in depth on you know the other teams in these smaller bowl games. We're really focusing on the playoffs, but you could stack up a bunch of bowl wins. You'd be pretty happy with that. And you know, all the NFL talent is going to be important to show you who is going off to the NFL and what these teams are producing. Because you no, know, even if you're not winning all these games, we're trying to determine who the best overall program is. Maybe not successful in terms of just victories. If you're maybe not as winning as a team like USC or UCLA. I mean, are you sending players to the NFL? Are you getting good recruiting classes? Are you helping the overall brand and exposure and reputation of your school? And speaking of UCLA and USC, that's your conference championship here in year three. And it's a tie game, 23-23. And UCLA trying to go back to back. And they have gone to three straight conference championships. And the pass there is going to be caught running up ahead past the 40-yard line. Now play action. He's going to throw it over the middle. And that's going to be intercepted. USC has it. And the Trojans are going to take over in enemy territory. 
But four minutes to play, now jumping ahead to three minutes to play after a first down. And now dropping to throw, that's going to be intercepted right back! And now UCLA has it! He's trying to go all the way, but he's not quite fast enough. He gets tracked down by a couple of USC offensive players, but UCLA is still set up in position to win this game now, but not if you're taking a big sack! And now they're gonna make this field goal a whole lot more difficult, and the kick is no good that sack might have cost them and now usc takes control but it's third down and seven and the throw is broken up at the two minute warning in a punting situation for the trojans now ucla has it right back with under two to play minute and a half now throwing underneath that's gonna be caught for the first down the clock stops at every first down so they're gonna hurry back to the line first down and ten throwing over the middle once again and that's gonna be caught in traffic back to the line they go second down and four after a six yard gain another nice little play underneath over the middle to go and get them the first down they are moving the chains little by little and now a handoff they feel they're comfortable in field goal range the kicker missed earlier but this is going to potentially be a lot closer if they don't get in the end zone and now another big run gets them inside the 10 yard Hard line goal to go and now it's a chip shot field goal try and UCLA has booted themselves to a second strike conference championship victory and they are rolling so far in these first couple of seasons a playoff win two conference titles and unfortunately it's not good enough to get anybody in a playoff game as USC was the only team in contention they were undefeated on the season I don't know how this happens. I've never seen this before. I guess a conference championship rematch in the Idaho Potato Bowl. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. I don't know how the bowl drawings work and how that figured. I could say I wouldn't be happy if I was USC who went 12 and 1 and just because they didn't win the conference they don't get to even play in the playoffs. I feel like 12 and 1 should be good enough to get you there, but they're going to miss out and you know, uh, they're going to get their revenge at least at a bowl game, but I don't think that really is going to make them feel a whole lot better. I feel like that's pretty rare to see as well, just a team of USC's caliber in the Pac-12 and you know, like, it's a really good team. It's not like a team in the MAC, no disrespect to the MAC, went 12-0 and, and you know, couldn't make the playoffs because of one loss. But USC couldn't make the playoffs after a 12-0 regular season, and they lost to UCLA, who is at least a competent school. I don't know, maybe USC is going to be out for some revenge, and they get the number one recruiting class in their state, so... They're going to be out for blood this season. And I mean, their quarterback, uh, for those of you who follow the college football world, their quarterback is Aiden Childs from Michigan State. So, you know, we'll see what they could do. And they go and cruise to another 12-0 and regular season. So UCLA is going to have to try to take them down. But unlike last year, USC, uh, fueled by some sort of anger, knowing that they'd probably have to go 13-0 and to make the playoffs, they're going to make it this time. They're going to get themselves a first round bye, and they're going to see what they can do in this second round against Florida. They're up by five, but Florida has the football. And they're going to be throwing outside, caught for the first down and more past midfield. And with four and a half minutes to go, just about, they got to hold them here as Florida's going to run up ahead for a first down to just inside the 35 yard line. Florida moving a little bit closer, 21 yard line now, first down and 10, throwing left side. And that's going to be jumped and intercepted and taking it back the other way. USC is going to have no one but Green and front of them and USC is going to take a two score early in this playoff game and they are very close to getting their first playoff win and matching UCLA's total deep shot here on third and 11 desperation the same guy picks it off and he's going to seal the game and USC has their first playoff win they're onto the semifinals with an undefeated record so we're going to see can USC cap things off here as Florida's going to score a touchdown just to kind of make it look close at the end, but they're not going to get an onside kick. They're not going to do anything with like 20 seconds to play. USC, they are on to the next one. 14 and 0. Can they go all the way? It's a 22-17 game here against Clemson. This is the team that knocked UCLA out the playoffs already. So we're going to see, can USC do what UCLA can't? And at the 40-yard line, just about, they're going to throw it, and it's going to be deep and caught, and that's going to be on the run for the touchdown. Clemson on top here, 23-22, it's a one-point game, two minutes to play, and a sack here, it's going to force fourth and 17, desperation mode, last chance for the Trojan offense on fourth and 17, and the shot's going to be caught, and breaking a tackle in enemy territory, and now USC suddenly in position to win this game with another play, and they get that play, now inside the red zone, and the field goal try from here would be pretty makeable, but they're going to get even closer with a run that gets them to go 
goal to go. Timeouts are starting to be used, but USC wanting the end zone with a spin move, and USC gets six, trying to make it eight, trying to get that seven-point lead. A QB draw by Childs gets blown up, and now Clemson is left with under a minute to play 45 seconds. Third down and 12, deep drop, deep middle, and that's going to be caught in traffic. Big time grab, keeps it alive. Hurrying back to line with about 30 seconds to play, and underneath it's going to be caught for the first down. The clock is going to stop, and they are in position. 30-yard line, throwing, and with 20 seconds to play, he's just going to try to run it, but he gets drilled and sacked, and now you've got little time to go. This may be your last play, taking a shot to the end zone, and it's going to be a flag on the play, and this one's not over. Over quite yet we have a flag on the play it's pass interference and now Clemson has it they're at the 17 yard line it's questionable to call pass interference on a Hail Mary but you got one more try and they're gonna throw it short of the goal line and they can't get in and Clemson goes down USC we're going to a national championship early on. They're trying to cap off an undefeated season. And after an undefeated regular season last year, it makes me wonder how in the world did this team lose to UCLA in that conference championship? I mean, they could have really went out there and won like 30 straight games. But here, they're in some trouble. They're down by five here with about two minutes to play. Throwing outside, that's going to be caught. They need a touchdown, and now they're in the red zone, and they're getting closer. Can they cap off this undefeated season? The hand Handoff is going to have a broken tackle, and he gets out of bounds after a couple extra yards. And second down and one. They're going to throw it quickly outside. Bubble screen, and it's a touchdown for the Trojans. Now going for two. Can they get that field goal lead? Handoff It's going to get blown up. USC just has to hold for a little bit longer, though, and they can try to get out of here with a national championship and a 1.1. One. They throw underneath for the catch. Completed for the first down, but now throwing again. He's going to go right side. That's going to be intercepted. The Trojans take it, and they're going to take the national championship. And it's an early start for the Trojans. We thought UCLA was in control early on, but the Trojans come out here with an undefeated 16-0 season and a national title victory. I don't usually highlight individual players, but when Aiden Childs comes in, transfers in from Michigan State, throws over 100 touchdowns in two years, and then leads you to a national championship, I think it's pretty valid to shout them out. Also, look at this guy. Five-star freshman wide receiver who's an 89 overall. He is nuts, and he definitely helped USC get their national championship. This team is stacked, so them going 16-0 isn't absurd and we got some other bowl results here but i mean it's gonna be hard to top what usc just did and they're gonna go and send a half a dozen players of the nfl but ucla does as well so i mean it's gonna be hard for a team to equal what usc did and try to compete with them ucla is probably in the best position because they do have the conference championships under their belt and a playoff appearance and everything and a playoff victory they don't win the recruiting usc does it's stanford who They've kind of fallen off a little bit because, you know, they made the conference championship in the playoffs after year one. They've been kind of virtually non-existent. But we could see like at USC, another undefeated season, another conference championship. And I think I can give a lot of credit to UCLA for always making it to the conference championship. But they're not going to make no playoff appearance. And we're going to have USC in the playoffs again. How about a little rematch against TCU? And TCU is down by nine, but they got a big play here. And inside the 40-yard line, two-minute warning has has hit they're gonna need a miracle they're gonna want to pull off this upset basically at this point because usc has won over 30 games in a row dating back to last season now and they're going to have it underneath inside the five yard line third down and one throwing and he's gonna get hit as he's thrown incomplete and a bold move to go for the field goal here when you're this close you might want to consider going for the touchdown especially with how little time there is they're gonna make it the one score game kick the onside kick that's gonna be recovered by USC, so all USC has to do is get one first down, and this game is over, but we're jumping ahead to third down and five, and TCU gets the stop, but they have no timeout, so they're going to have little time to play with here. 30 seconds to play, and he will drop to throw with a clean pocket, but he's going to check it down underneath, and that's going to be really bad because you're running out of time now. Hurrying back to the line, it's third down and four after a spike. Drop in. He is going to throw one outside incomplete. you got 11 seconds to play, and one more opportunity to maybe set yourself up in Hail Mary range and they're gonna take the deep shot here he's gonna be and he's got it and TCU are you kidding me they just did that
bad. And they just knocked off the 30 plus game win streak of USC. They were down by nine with two minutes to go and they ride it all the way to a national championship. What is that TCU team made of? Cause that is crazy. And now USC is reeling because that was a chance to really cement themselves as like an all-time college football team if they would have went out there and won back-to-back -back undefeated national championship seasons. And they've had it crushed by TCU. They've only lost two games in the last three seasons, and both of them were on the last second. I mean, USC still got a super talented team, though, and here they are once again. I mean, this is just what happens when you give USC a good defense. Look at that point differential. They are going to come out here though fresno state's been kind of sneaky good they, they've been you know not in the conference championship yet they are finally here and they are leading against usc but fresno state has won eight plus games every season so far so we're gonna see if they can finally have their coming out party that's gonna be a complete and three and out now third down for usc as they were threatening to give this one back but they get the completed pass and it's gonna be short fourth down and inches Trying to get themselves into that field goal range. Handoff. They're going to get the first down and a lot more. And they're going to get inside to the 25-yard line. And field goal range has been achieved. But they're trying to get closer. Handing off. Up the middle goes the USC back for a big-time game. Now they're inside the 10, third down, and three. And that's going to be caught for a touchdown. And USC has now given the opportunity for Fresno State to at least possess the football again. Two-point conversion. It's going to be good, so now Fresno's going to need a touchdown. The extra point to get this to overtime. They're going to throw there, and that's going to be a big-time grab over the middle, just shielding his body, getting up there. And now they're a little bit closer, throwing. They're going to go over the middle once again, and he's going to hang on to it and taking the shot. Now they're in enemy territory inside the 40, second and 10. Throwing, and that's going to be caught over the middle again, and they hang on once more. Now they're inside the 10-yard line, 30 seconds to play, and Fresno has it outside. That's going to be caught in the pylon he's in and now it's overtime here Fresno trying to take down this juggernaut they throw outside first and 10 turns a first and goal at the one and they're so close to second and goal now after a little backed up and it's picked up on the bubble screen and taking it the other way is USC they're gonna get tracked down but now they are just a field goal away they send the field goal unit on and the kick is good and Fresno put up a valiant effort but USC has done it again and they're going back to the playoffs for a little bit of revenge can they come out here and avenge what happened TCU's on the other side of the bracket will we see them again and we head out to see that Fresno State they made the playoffs but didn't go their way they get absolutely smacked around by Miami so unfortunate for them but we're gonna see if they can continue to be on the rise meanwhile USC is at a tight one 31 31 over Tennessee and they're gonna throw over the middle for a completed pass inside the 40 yard line there's three minutes to play so USC could get into their clock chewing offense and try to get a field goal but they get stopped fourth and one and the kick is gonna be good and USC now a couple of minutes away two minutes away now third down and one throwing it's going to be caught and they find the soft spot in the zone and get to midfield now a little ahead of midfield under two to play they go down the sidelines and they got it inside the 15 yard line now at the seven they're gonna throw it and rolling left he's gonna tuck and run it and he's got the end zone and usc threatening to go down here they have 49 seconds to play can they do something here on fourth down and three he's gonna roll he's gonna run it he's got the first down and he's got a little bit more than that past midfield and usc trying to keep the undefeated hopes alive once again throwing and rolling he's gonna break out of a sack and throw it out of bounds he saved them a lot of time and a lot of yards fourth down and two though last chance can they convert again they hand it off and they don't get it and usc goes down fresno couldn't do it but tennessee they finish the job and usc once again gets stunned in a playoff game with an undefeated season on the line and you have to be frustrated if you're usc I mean, you've lost only three games in four years and you got one national championship. That's obviously still super impressive, but man, they could have been right there on the cusp of being on that all-time dynasty like level team with only three losses in four years but by this point you've kind of lost that entire core that went 16 and 0 basically everyone's gone to the nfl and you're gonna see if you could try to recoup the next generation of great players here unfortunately they cannot and your conference championship is san diego out of nowhere 
versus Fresno State. San Diego, I don't know where this came from. They've been just kind of hiding around. I mean, the, the focus has been just solely on USC. But now we got new contenders. We got new people trying to make a statement here in this conference. And Fresno with the ball up by three. They're in shotgun on second down and ten. Throwing quickly. He beat him off the line. And he's got the speed. And he is going to go. And Fresno takes their two-score lead. And now... San Diego in desperation, both throwing outside on fourth down, but it's not going to matter. Fresno captures their comfort championship that they were so close to last year, and they're going to be moving on, and San Diego going to be disappointed, but they had a great season, and they will be punching their tickets to the playoffs, and Fresno, unfortunately, is going to be left out the dance. But San Diego still reeling after that loss is going to get smacked around by Nebraska on their home turf. And unfortunately for USC, I mean, how far do you have to fall to go from, you know, dynasty level team to getting smacked by UMass in a bowl game? Still, they're going to be very much far in the lead, but I, I want to see Fresno kind of get up there, get another chance. And maybe San Diego has something special cooking down there because they could potentially have another season just like last one. I'm surprised by the amount of undefeated regular seasons we are getting here. I mean, maybe the, the depth of this conference is a little weak because we haven't seen some of these teams been able to, you know, break through. Uh, UC Davis, San Diego State's done a whole bunch of nothing. San Jose State, I mean, we, we got to see some of these teams do something here. And we see Cal Poly in Sacramento State. There we go. They're, they're on cue. We've seen San Diego make it. We've seen Cal Poly in Sacramento State now make it. So three of our four FCS schools have made conference championships. And we're going to get a guaranteed winner here. It's going to be Cal Poly with the ball up by two late in the game as another screen pass dumped out. It's going to be fourth down though, and they're going to try the field goal to make it a touchdown game. And that two point lead grows to five. So it's going to be up to Sacramento State to try to come up with a big touchdown drive with two minutes to play, throwing deep. It's going to be caught, and he's going to get tracked down just. Barely if he would have been able to break that tackle. They would have had a lead here, but second down and 10 now rolling. He's going to get sacked. And now they're going to hurry back to the line with under a minute and a half to play. It's going to be fourth down and very long throwing it for the marker. And he can. It's going to be intercepted. He didn't need to pick it off. He could have swatted it down, but it's not going to matter. Regardless, the ball is back with Cal Poly. And they're going to take home a conference championship. So we see our first FCS school rise to the ranks of being a conference champion in Cal Poly. Polly's going to take themselves into a first round bye in the playoffs and they're taking on Bowling Green. This is by no means a powerhouse school. One of these schools is going to get a major playoff victory and head to the semifinals. Can it be Cal Poly? Bowling Green has a completed pass and he's going to be racing to the end zone and he's gone. And now Cal Poly's going to have a chance with a field goal deficit. They got the big play with under three minutes to play. Now they're past midfield, second down and four. Trying to get at least a field goal range but you can't do it when you're throwing a pick and not just any interception it's a pick six late in this game and now your deficit is 10 points you're still not quite out of it yet if you can get a quick score here third down is going to see a shot deep he jumps up and makes the grab it's a touchdown but now you gotta stop him on defense one and a half minutes to play first down and 10 and there's the big run and you can't afford that and that's going to do it you give up the first down you run out of time and you had an opportunity to really make an impact and get a big time playoff victory and they just couldn't do it bowling green was right there for the taking and now we're gonna see if one of these other schools could kind of you know, take over for USC's gap that they have kind of left for now. I mean, it's only a matter of time before USC and all these recruits that they keep getting every year starts to become good again. So someone's got to take advantage here. And we've seen some of these schools go kind of all in these last two years while USC's been down. But will they stay down for even longer? I mean, they're still losing five plus players to, you know, the draft every year. But Fresno State's taking home some of the best recruiting classes that we have seen in these last couple of seasons and in this next year USC is still pretty nice but it's not going to be a conference championship appearance for them it's going to be Fresno versus San Jose so San Jose State getting their first double digit win season of the video and they're trying to be you know the team that takes down this new potential contender in Fresno State who's doing a spectacular job the last couple of seasons they've taken home a conference championship before but they're looking for another as they got a big shot down the sidelines they are down by four they have an undefeated season on the 
line. I don't know how all these teams in this conference keep getting an undefeated regular season, but they keep it alive with a touchdown. And now 13-0 is looking like it could be a possibility. Minute to play, throwing left side. That's going to be caught with a couple of defenders and offensive players in the area, breaking some tackles and getting them closer. San Jose State now third down and one. They get it, and it's going to be gold to go now. Can they get this touchdown to take home a conference title? It's going to be dropping to throw, and that's going to be caught. He gets his feet in. Touchdown, and now Fresno, they got little time to go, and they can try to come up with a miracle here, and maybe they got one, and that's going to be a big play inside the 40 timeout. Burned. 20-plus seconds to play. Dropping to throw. They're going to go over the middle. That's going to be caught, and he's close. They're inside the five-yard line now. Maybe one play away here. Dropping to throw. He's got him underneath. He's got the end zone, and they're going to leave San Jose State with just a couple of seconds to play. Dropping to throw on first down. They're going to take the shot deep, and he's got it. He's on the run, and how is this going to happen? We've seen this already. This is how USC got their season destroyed, and now another undefeated season has gotten crushed by a big-time play. San Jose State. They are going to be conference champions, and that's their coming out party here. And they're going to go to the playoffs along with Fresno, and it's not going to really amount to much for Fresno. I think they're still a little shot after that loss. A heartbreaking loss and their 12-0 season has been derailed but at least Fresno gets a successful hate watch out of this season because they're gonna watch San Jose go down pretty handily to USF in the playoffs so both of those schools have unfortunate ends there this season but San Jose State gets an exciting conference championship out of it and we're gonna really see like we got Fresno, San Jose, you know Cal Poly, Sacramento State, San Jose, all these schools, you know, almost every single one of them is getting in the mix. Stanford, I, they fell off hard. UC Davis has done literally nothing and San Diego State's trying to be the worst team in all the college football, it feels like at this point. But most of the other schools have at least kind of stamped their mark as like, we're trying to be contenders and we're trying to be players here in this conference and in the national title scene. But USC back on top with another top tier recruiting class and you know, it'll only be a matter of time before their, some of their talent shines through. Before this next season, it's going to be Fresno still on top. Another undefeated regular season. And look at San Jose. I mean, imagine going 11-1 and on the regular season. You can't even make the conference championship because both the other two teams went undefeated in their conference. So I guess that's a little bit on San Jose for not being able to beat whichever one of these schools that they did happen to play. But, I mean, San Jose could be going to the playoffs and not even a part of the conference championship. I mean, we could have three teams here going to the playoffs. But Fresno trying to avenge what happened to them last season and if that ball was better placed that could have happened again with another big touchdown late in the game but now instead UCLA they gotta still drive over 50 yards but they're gonna get sacked here and hurrying back to the line it's now a big time third down situation and they got a lot of way to go and they're gonna throw it deep tipped and picked off and Fresno is going to be able to get the football back and get out of here with the victory this time they're 13 and 0 and this this time they're going to be going to the playoffs as a first round by team and we're going to see UCLA and San Jose State also in the playoffs. San Jose State though, they're having a tough time here. It's 9 to 0 and they're not going to be able to convert on fourth down. They're going to get shut out 9 to 0 in a very weird game but they didn't put any points up on the board. UCLA, on the other hand, they're up by six, but Ohio State has the football, and they're trying to drive down for a game-winning touchdown, and they already got the ball to the 41-yard line. It is going to be first down and 10 minute and a half to play, dropping the throw, and that's going to be intercepted. UCLA has the football back, and with one first down needed to seal this game here on third down and one, handing it off. They get the first down, so UCLA is going to come out of nowhere after a couple of seasons doing, you know, minimal things. It's going to come out here with a playoff victory. Unfortunately for them, it's not going to really get a whole lot better. Oregon just loves stomping teams out in the playoffs. I can't tell you how many playoff runs have been, you know, been met with a screeching halt to Oregon. But Texas a and is also going to take down the undefeated Fresno State. I mean, this game was only a two-score game, but Fresno still scored a late touchdown to get it to be a two-score game. I mean, they got thoroughly beaten. And now you have to start to wonder, is Fresno, uh, they're, they're struggling to get over that hump. I mean, they got to an undefeated regular season, couldn't 
you know, finish the job in the conference championship. They got to an undefeated regular season, won the conference championship, but then get knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. And is this the ceiling of this Fresno State team? Are they going to be able to get over the hump? Are they going to be able to do it? Or will they just kind of sink back down? Fresno has the opportunity here to be the only team that can maybe rival USC and what they were able to accomplish. And now, we're going to see if they can continue to do it next season. They, It's hard to get undefeated regular season, so they, they, they don't got many more chances at this. Well, they did it again here. 12-0 regular season, and the only team that can stop them is the one team that stopped them once before, San Jose State. Get a little rematch here in the conference championship where San Jose State has the football, and they have it with less than two minutes to play in enemy territory now. Trying to get on that game-winning drive like they did once before. And it wasn't even really much of a drive last time. It was just one big miracle play. They're in the red zone, though. Minute and a half to play. Third down. They just go for the handoff. So very conservative play. It gets them pretty close. They're going to be settling for the field goal here. So they're pretty content to get it maybe to overtime. 50 seconds to play. Now jumping ahead. 25 seconds to play. Throwing. And it's going to be caught. Timeout used. 22 seconds to play, 48-yard line throwing, and that's going to be caught, and they're in field goal range, 21-yard line, and they're going to just set them up, and the kick is good. Fresno, they've done it this time. They got the conference championship, but they've done that before. Can they get to the playoffs and win? They got the first round by like last time. They're going to have a tough opponent. And they take care of business in round one pretty easily. A 17 to three, dang near a shutout. And now they got Alabama here. They're up by seven and a fumble here. And it's gonna be a scoop dump. And it's gonna be a scoop and score. Two score lead with four minutes to play. And they're on the verge of a national championship appearance. Alabama in desperation mode, second and long. And that's gonna be a bat throw and intercepted. And Fresno, they're not playing no games. They're taking care of business and handling these elite level schools with ease. Notre Dame goes down pretty easily. Alabama get taken care of in the fourth quarter. Now they're in the national championship against Tennessee. And down by four. This one's a lot closer. And they're getting closer to the end zone with that big play. Now inside the red zone. Down by four. Three minutes to play. Handoff is going to be outside. He gets to the edge. And he gets to the first down marker. It's goal to go. Trying to take that lead. Just over two and a half to play. Dropping the throw. He's going to go back in the end zone. That's going to be caught for a touchdown. And Tennessee now needing to come up with a big play of their own. But the big play is going to be for Fresno State. And that's going to be intercepted. Now, how about you get yourself a clock chewing drive? Couple of timeouts used. Tennessee out of them. And now a first down to end the game. And they get it. Fresno State. I didn't think after USC when it went 16 and 0 that they'd have competition in this video. But how about Fresno State putting up a very similar stretch of years to what USC did and they go undefeated and they win a national championship. USC's coming up their worst season, I'm pretty sure. And, and now they got to look at themselves and say, how can we get back to it? And how can we get to the position where where we're the, the top dogs of this conference. Fresno's on top again. They're in the conference championship. Not quite an undefeated season this time, but they're going to take care of business over San Diego, and they're going to be going on to the playoffs once more. And I think if, you know, in these videos of these 15-year stretches, if you can go and win two national championships, it's going to be hard for anybody to definitively beat you. But they're going to be tied here with Liberty. Minute and a half to play. Fresno trying to get back-to-back -back championships here. I'm going to throw underneath. And with that stop, Liberty takes the ball, runs it out. We're in overtime. An overtime playoff game here for Fresno. Throwing an interception. And that's on the first play of overtime. They throw the interception. Now Liberty has the football. Third down and three. They break out of a sack and throw a touchdown. And that's how you end a game there in style. And Liberty takes out Fresno. So no back-to-backs for them. USC, they're back in the top 25. They've won a bowl game. They're trying to crawl their way back, but they just... I don't know. Everyone seemingly left them. I don't know what's going on over there. No other school's been able to contend with Fresno State in this conference now. You know, San Jose State had a couple of nice years, but can they come back? Can they compete? They already knocked them off one time, but not the second. USC's back on top of a nice recruiting class. Fresno's kind of 
fallen behind a little bit in the recruiting aspect of things. USC is just inherently, you know, still a great school to go to. And here we are. It is USC. It is Fresno State. USC is back, but Fresno State's trying to hold them off, and it seems like we have been on a collision course for this game, and now USC trying to make them remember that they are the team to beat in this conference, and they may have taken a couple of years off, but they are going to be back, and they are back in the national title scene. They're back in the title picture. They're back in contention, and down by seven with three minutes to go. They're throwing over the middle, and they got it to about the 20-yard line. They're trying to get on this game-tying drive. He's going to step up and throw on the run now they got goal to go and now it's gonna be third down and goal after a couple of nice plays on defense but now you're gonna need to stop the quarterback on the run yes you can fourth down and goal usc in trouble dropping to throw in a clean pocket a lot of time and eventually someone gets open touchdown usc and Fresno, it's now their turn to try to go and make a big play. They got a big one to start the drive. They're close to the 40-yard line. Now they're in enemy territory with 40 seconds to play. Throwing, it's going to be caught, and they are going to be in field goal range now. 35 seconds to play. Handing it off, trying to run some clock, but you get a big run there. And now that field goal is going to be really easy. Kick is up, and it is good. And Fresno State. They're not deterred by USC, and they hold them off. USC still earned a playoff berth, and they're going to be against North Texas, but I mean, you know, Fresno's getting that first round by, and USC's struggling. It's going to be fourth and inches down by two scores, and they get sacked. They get the football back with very little time, still down by two scores, and then they throw an interception. So you got North Texas in a playoff game at home, and you can't get the job done. And now is USC... Have they lost it? Have they, you know, maybe forfeited this video over to Fresno State, who's out here competing against Alabama once again? They're down by three, but they're going to get a stop with under two minutes to play. They get the football back, and they have time to try to make something happen. But they make it happen for Alabama, and they get a little bit of revenge from a couple of years ago when Fresno knocked them out of the playoffs. Alabama wins it. So both teams go down in their first playoff game. But now we are looking ahead to see, can USC continue this upward trajectory? Can Fresno continue on being one of the best teams in the nation? Can San Jose State get back in the mix? Can one of these other, you know, FCS schools who got in there for one or two conference championships and had one or two good seasons, can they do something? Because, you know, they popped in for like one or two double-digit win seasons, a conference championship. I mean, Cal Poly, for example, made the playoffs one year, but they haven't done anything since. Can one of these other schools like UCLA get back in the mix? Can Stanford or Cal do something? Or are they going to just let USC and Fresno internally fight for this conference well at least for this year we're going to get another match in this what has become potentially a great rivalry between these two schools and it is another closed game they just keep putting on good games fresno trying to get a stop here they're down by three usc has the ball and they're trying to run this clock out handing it off and they got another big run and they're going to be at midfield so I mean, they're just going to continue to gash this defense with big plays. Third down now, throwing, and that's going to be caught, and that's going to be a big play. And you can't get off the field, but you do knock them out of bounds, so it helps you out there. Third down, handing it off, and that's going to be a stop. Field goal is on the way, but you've already lost so much time. You only got like 20 seconds to play, and you need a touchdown. I don't know if we got another miracle in us for this video. Fresno is just trying to avoid a sack. They do. They got one play left, potentially. They're going to drop to throw it. And they're going to go deep left side. And how does it keep happening? And this time, Fresno State takes down USC. This is the third just miracle. Last second touchdown. The extra point to just end this. Fresno is going to upset USC and this team just cannot lose in these big moments right now and every conference championship that comes and goes seemingly is the Bulldogs conference title to take home. USC makes it to the playoffs. Fresno does get that first round by but USC 
I mean, they want to find a road maybe back to Fresno, and they're going to maybe have an opportunity, an interception, and an opportunity to get into the end zone maybe, or at least tie this game with a field goal, drop into throw. And he's got a chance to step up and run it. He doesn't run. He wanted to throw it, and he just eats a bad sack. But USC's going to get themselves a field goal. It is good. Now we're in overtime, and Ohio State, can they hold them off? They get a touchdown immediately, and now it's USC's turn. Third down and inches throwing, and it's going to be broken up. Now USC fourth down and inches. You could just run the football here if you want to, but they try to bounce it outside. They can't get it. Ohio State takes out USC who just can't seem to win one of these big games anymore. Now Fresno, they're taking on Texas A&M, who's already beaten them in a playoff game previously, so they're trying to get a little bit of revenge, but you can't stop them on the ground, then you're not getting this football back. Texas A&M's gonna hand it again, and that's gonna be another big first down. And now you're running out of time, you're running out of timeouts, and they're in field goal range, and they're gonna eventually, after a couple of broken tackles, get a stop. But a field goal try on the way with little time to go is going to be good. And Fresno State is going to go down to Texas A&M for a second time in the playoffs in this video. So an unfortunate ending for their season once again. Well, we got one season left after this. And I think it's been a pretty competitive race at the top. I feel like we've kind of established where all these teams are going to lie. But let's have one more action-packed season for these schools and try to see if one can maybe capture that second national championship, kind of set themselves apart. We obviously know USC and Fresno are going to be in the mix, but can one of these other schools kind of stake their claim as maybe the potential number three school? Can one of these other schools do something spectacular? Can San Diego State or UC David do literally anything? Those two schools have been bottom barrel just whole bunch of nothing we'll obviously see once we tally the whole results where all these teams and all these schools fell in but for one last time we're gonna get to see fresno versus usc definitely the rivalry of this video usc up by six i don't know how these games keep getting to be around the same score you know 24 27 30 24 28 21 like all these games are just like all the similar high mid 20s and low 30s fresno has an opportunity to try to end this one and they cannot do it it's usc who's ending it and usc finally gets their conference championship victory and crown back took them till the final season but they are in control they got the number one seed and fresno they are in the playoffs as well so can they go and get themselves another playoff victory to add to their resume and try to make it as strong as possible for the final tally of this video every conference championship every playoff win matters between these two schools that have gone blow for blow for 15 years and fresno trying to throw into the end zone will they get close this they will they're gonna get to the five yard line goal to go minute and a half to play fresno throwing and they got the end zone touchdown and now it's gonna come down to ole miss and that offense to try to do something here third down and they're gonna throw outside that's gonna be intercepted and fresno is gonna take home a playoff victory here and they're getting to the second round and now we gotta turn to see if they can go and make it just as far or further than usc despite where they started in this bracket. They're taking on TCU now with two minutes to play, and TCU know where to go, and that's just a disastrous sack to take. But now first and 10 for Fresno State. Great field position, down by seven. They're gonna throw outside. That's gonna be caught inside the 40-yard line. Trying to get on that game, tie and drive, dropping the throw once again. They're gonna get sacked here, and now it's gonna be second and 17, hurrying back to the line. Dropping the throw again, and he's got nowhere to go, and he's getting sacked again. Third down and very, very long, and he's gonna throw it outside and that's gonna be intercepted and fresno's time in this video has come to an end they win a playoff game but they can't get any further than that and now we turn to usc to finish things off who are up by six they got the football they're in scoring position on third down they're gonna run it ahead get themselves a field goal position boot the kick through it is good 
And now they are moving on to the next round. I mean, they didn't really have much of a struggle here against them. And now they got TCU here. And TCU is the team that knocked out Fresno. So can they go and do what Fresno couldn't do and take out TCU? Well, they're up by seven. But TCU's got the ball with four and a half to go in enemy territory. And they got a big play up there. And that's going to be inside the five-yard line. First and goal. And TCU trying to take down both the best this conference has to offer. And they get into the end zone. USC has three minutes to play here. Third down and 11. Drop in to throw it. They got a big catch. And now getting to the 40 yard line now enemy territory it's third down and four we jump ahead a little bit they're trying to run the clock run the ball out and they get a first down so they can keep burning clock and try to kick that game winning field goal hand off again can they get to the marker they get out of bounds so that's going to be very costly they could have ran this clock down a lot more and you know forced tcu to be in a more dire situation they get the field goal but they're going to leave tcu a minute to go and now they're going to throw it, and that's going to be caught for a first down, breaking the tackle and getting past the, you know, their own 40. Can they get past the midfield strike? Yes, they can. And now they're in that long-distance field goal range. Play action and throwing, and he's got to get something big. He can't take a sack here, and he does just that. It's third down and long, and that's a bad play, about as bad of a thing as you can hope for. And when you take another sack, it's going to be fourth and super long, and you don't got another miracle in you, do you? No, it's going to be picked off this time USC isn't getting their hearts broken by TCU and they've had a nice little rivalry with TCU in these playoff games and this time USC comes out on top they're going to a national championship and perhaps this could be their chance to solidify themselves as the top team if they could get a second national championship but Auburn trying to run out this clock third down and they get a big play where was the coverage no one is gonna catch them and Auburn is going to take them down USC it looked like they went full-blown commit on the run obviously not the right decision Auburn came out with a pass that they were not expecting but we can at least say the USC really up themselves in this final year to try to get themselves over the hump and get them that victory. A second national championship might have done it, but a championship appearance is still pretty big and, you know, adding two playoff wins to their tally. So we're going to finalize everything, tally everything up, put all these teams into tier, and we are going to determine who was the best, who was the worst, and we are going to get into every little bit of statistics and data right now starting off with the tier four of these teams and that is going to be the teams that underwhelmed and just really didn't play a factor at all in this video and when you look at stanford they did do a lot better than the two teams that they are put in the same grouping with but when it came to stanford they were not good enough to be in the next tier like they were still really bad so i kind of just combined this tier to just be not only were you a non-factor but you were underwhelming because stanford was a team that went out there first year conference championship made the playoffs they, they lost the playoff game but still like you know they were riding high a little bit in the first season and then they just did nothing i mean they got a couple of five stars won three bowl games but in 15 years you only made four bowl games they never made a conference championship again they obviously never played a playoff again and overall had a losing record so i, I had to put them here and then these other two teams, UC Davis just did nothing and San Diego State did nothing. I mean, it is impressive how bad they were. A combined three bowl appearances for them. No All-Americans, very little players drafted, bad recruiting classes, no four stars, just nothing for these teams. And they did literally not have an impact on this video <laughs> as much as it, you like to see every team get involved there are some teams that are just down there at the bottom I mean for San Diego State they had three straight seasons where they went one and eleven I think San Diego State pretty easily was the worst team of this group and then you get into tier three which is basically just the middle class of the FBS teams that settled around that 60th range where you know some seasons they'd kind of jump up and you know get themselves into the top 25 get themselves into a conference championship every once in a while but also some seasons where they would slump down below 500 and all four of these teams really kind of figured into that i was really surprised to see that cal was consistently really nice and if it wasn't for the fact that they just one couldn't win a bowl game to save their lives a one in eight record in bowl games and two just didn't ever have a great season 
they would have probably been in the next tier. Cal never had less than six wins in a season and never had a losing regular season. They had, you know, a season where they went like six and seven but lost their bowl game. They were consistently seven wins every single season. They made a conference championship and lost it. They put up some decent NFL talent, was pretty up there when it came to the recruiting classes. They just never took a big step into that next tier, never got themselves into the playoff picture that much, and just didn't do a whole lot outside of the fact that they would win seven, eight games every single season, which is nice, but you kind of settle yourself into the middle class. And then these other three teams were all FCS teams that we brought up and all had very similar results, like scarily similar results. 108, 108, and 110 wins, all hovering around the same amount of losses. And then I think in Sacramento State's case, they kind of took the edge when it came to the overall talent that they were able to acquire. Best recruiting classes, highest tier prospects, and in turn, you know, you got the most amount of players drafted in the NFL. And then, you know, you also won an extra bowl game compared to these other schools. You weren't able to win a conference championship. Cal Poly did of this group was the only one to win a conference championship. And San Diego, they were able to make the conference championship twice, which none of these other teams did. And they were able to make the playoffs. So Cal Poly, San Diego made the playoffs. Sacramento State had their talent. But all these teams just were not ever able to sustain being great or just weren't able to really establish themselves into that next tier of true contending teams. The next tier, I, I really struggled whether to include San Jose State in here, but I think I decided to give them the edge over the four teams below them and put them into the inconsistently good tier, even though their win-loss record is a little bit closer and in line with those other four teams. San Jose State was a team that really started pretty poorly, had a lot of down seasons but then as we kind of got further along they really started to string along a lot of good years their record was kind of tanked because they had like three and nine and four and eight seasons but then they came out multiple double digit win seasons two playoff appearances yeah they didn't win a playoff game but getting to the playoffs multiple times is you know very important because you know, anybody can get lucky once. I feel like Cal Poly had that one season. They kind of got lucky one time. If you do it twice, it's a little less luck. They were also the only team to just kind of take on uh, Fresno State on their rise, and they even stole a conference championship from them. So that's pretty big. And they were just overall able to do a lot with little talent. I mean, 94th average recruiting class was, I think, worse than like everyone in the previous tier. So they did more with less. And then UCLA... I mean, they started off really good, and UCLA was a team that was in the conference championship like each of the first couple of seasons, was doing their thing, they made the playoffs, they won a playoff game, then they just kind of fell off a little bit, but they would still get talent, still sent players to the NFL, still had some of the better recruiting classes, and then they had another year where they just kind of popped back into the playoffs and won a playoff game, and then they just sunk back down, so like, it was really weird because UCLA has the, the pedigree and some of the bigger reputation in this, you know, group of teams. So they were able to benefit a lot because of it, but they just weren't able to sustain anything great and get themselves into that tier one. And then we got the two top teams. This was pretty clear cut. And I think the only discussion really is who was the better team here? Because there is arguments on both sides. So they had very similar total stats when it came to their win-loss record. I mean... Both teams had a dominant stretch. Both teams won about 160 games to about 40-ish losses. Both teams had a 16-0 national championship winning season. Both teams were in the conference championship perennially. You know, Fresno got six. USC got five. Both of them made the playoffs a lot. Fresno made the playoffs two more times. But USC got an extra playoff win out of it and won an extra bowl game. And because it's USC and them being that big brand, that big school, they dominated in the recruiting with the classes and dominated when it came to sending players to the NFL. But Fresno was second when it came to recruiting, basically. And despite the fact that they were not as big of a school as USC, they brought in more five-star players than anybody. You know, even for the 111 four-star pluses that USC was able to bring in, only three were five-stars. Fresno was able to bring in six five stars, which is pretty impressive. So I think this just comes down to who you preferred. I think I was going to say Fresno is the winner if I had to give it out. Because the thing with Fresno, they were never bad. They never had less than eight wins in a season. 
they came out the gates winning eight, nine games, kind of just let USC do their thing. And then once USC started to fall down, they rose up. It was perfect timing. USC, on the other hand, the second they fell off, they fell off kind of hard for like four years even had like a losing season, hovered around 500, and then they came back, and then they even made the national championship in the final season, but never having less than eight wins is crazy. Having that same, you can't even argue, well, USC had the 16-0 and season. Fresno State did too. They had a national championship as well. So I think it just kind of comes down to what do you value most? Never having a bad season, never having less than eight wins, never having a losing season, making the playoffs more and consistently being in the mix, or USC, on the other hand, having way more talent acquired, having better classes, better players sent to the NFL. It just comes down to what you prefer there. Me, I'd say Fresno State was more impressive and definitely way more surprising, but you can let me know who you think won this and who do you think was the better team here. And overall, that will wrap things up for this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, let me know who you think won and, you know, any other ideas you may have, and all support is much appreciated. Like, comment, and subscribe as all that stuff is super helpful and super, you know, motivating for me to continue to get all these, you know, time-consuming, long videos out. So I will see you guys all in the next one.